Today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Fire. For more than 20 years, Midwest Fire has been manufacturing high-quality tankers, tanker pumpers, and fire rescue vehicles in the United States and Canada. Keeping firefighters safe while enhancing their capabilities is what they do best. To learn more, go to MidwestFire.com. This is Tiger Schmittendorf, Deputy Fire Coordinator for the Erie County Department of Emergency Services. You're listening to the SA Matters Radio Show with Dr. Rich Gassaway. The SA Matters mission is simple. They want to help us see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. Hello and welcome to episode 91 of the Situational Awareness Matters radio show. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situational awareness and decision making for individuals and teams who work in high risk, high consequence environments. The SA Matters mission is simple, to help you see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. I'm coming to you today from Charlotte, North Carolina, where I'm in town delivering a situational awareness program on the campus of the University of North Carolina for the Fire and Rescue Management Institute. This is the second time the University of North Carolina has hosted a Situational Awareness Matters tour stop. So thank you to Program Director Carrie Kennedy for the faith and confidence in my message to have me back again. I would like to extend a special thanks to Charlotte Fire Department Captain Jay Adams and the crew of Station 4 Sea Shift for inviting me to have dinner with the crew. The meal and the fellowship were both top-notch. Unfortunately, the station's one of the busiest in Charlotte, so the visit was interrupted several times. Thank you also to Chris Simmons from the Mecklenburg County EMS for picking me up at 5 a.m. to take me back to the airport. Before we jump in today's feature segment on habits, I want to take a moment to share a message from our sponsor, Midwest Fire, and their president, Sarah Atchison. Hi, I'm Sarah Atchison, owner of Midwest Fire Equipment and Repair. We are proud to sponsor Dr. Gassaway's Situational Awareness Matters podcast. We share passion for saving lives and have been working with firefighters to customize cost-effective, multi-purpose fire trucks since 1987. Our trucks are engineered and built to serve you and your community for decades. We would like to invite you to join our online community. On our social media, we provide you with company updates, trade show appearances, recent deliveries, and fire safety tips to share with your friends and followers. We are on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Tweet us at Meadows Fire and let us know you heard us on the podcast. Thank you and enjoy the podcast. Thank you, Sarah Atchison and all the staff at Midwest Fire for your awesome commitment to improving first responder safety. I sincerely appreciate your support of the mission. You heard Sarah, she wants to hear from you on Twitter. Go over to at Midwest Fire and shoot her a little message and tell her that you heard her on this podcast show. It would mean a lot to her, mean a lot to me. Thank you. In this episode, we're going to explore how we develop habits and routines. Habits and routines that could save your life or kill you. Perhaps you've heard it said that we are creatures of habit. The more we do something over and over again, the more likely that behavior will be turned into a habit. But what happens in the mystical world of the brain when a behavior becomes a habit? Is your behavior under stress predictable, rational, understandable? The answers may be unsettling. Habits. Good or bad, we all have them. On an emergency scene, good habits can save your life. And bad habits can result in tragic consequences. So it stands to reason that you would want to form good habits and avoid the bad habits, right? But what happens if you form a bad habit and aren't aware of it? Can this happen? You bet it can. 
I see it all the time. Fundamentally, your habits are formed through repetition and learning. Practice something a lot, and you can learn it so well, the task becomes automatic. A habit. When this happens, you won't even have to think about what you're doing because you're programmed for automatic performance. Automatic performance. The ability to perform high risk, high consequence tasks properly the first time is at the core of why first responders train so often. There may only be one chance to get it right. Does repetition really make much difference? In a word, absolutely. It makes a huge difference. In my mental management of emergencies program, I conduct several exercises that demonstrate how ridiculously important it is to form good habits and how habits impact performance. The exercises show how performance is improved by repetition that results in memorization of a cognitive skill. But what about a physical task to be performed? Are the lessons the same? Yes, they are. Muscles can learn automatic performance as well, as the neurons can learn the same scripts as cognitive data memorization. Driving the point home. Have you ever driven your car somewhere while you were distracted? Maybe you were actively engaged in a conversation with someone else in the vehicle. Or perhaps you just had something weighing heavily on your mind. Whatever the cause, your entire attention wasn't on the act of driving. Yet you still managed to arrive at your destination without getting into an accident. It is entirely possible that you may not even have a recall of some or most of the trip. How can you drive a vehicle with such little conscious effort? The answer lies in the power of learned scripts, routines, habits that are formed from repetition of tasks. You drive a vehicle so often that you don't even have to think about putting your right foot on the gas pedal or where you're supposed to do when you come to a traffic light changing from green to yellow. The response is automatic. Your foot leaves the gas and depresses the brake pedal and you come safely to a stop. You do this so automatically that you don't even give much thought to the amazing brain functions that facilitated that kind of automatic performance. Stress and Habits You're creatures of habit under the best of conditions. Add stress and you'll become a slave to your habits. Your performance will become automatic, scripted performance of learned behaviors that you may have learned years earlier. Responders who do dumb things at emergency scenes often aren't doing dumb things at all, at least on purpose. Most of the time their performance is a reflection of their training, the habits that they have formed over time. Let me share with you a story that was shared with me at a program when I was in Colorado. A convenient mart was being held up. The assailant was inside with a gun pointed on the clerk. This was all caught on a video surveillance camera. While the store was being robbed, two police car, a police car pulled up with two officers in it in a marked car. The officers didn't know the store was being robbed. But the assailant looked out and saw the officers and didn't want to get in a shootout with them, so he went to the back of the store to kind of hide. The two officers come into the store and they split up. And one went over to where the coffee was and the other one went up an aisle to go to the back of the store where there's usually the uh, coolers with soft drinks. 
As the officer got to the end of the aisle, he could have turned left and avoided any confrontation with the bad guy, but he turned right and he was face to face with the bad guy who pointed his gun at the cop. The cop's hands went up. All of a sudden, he was in a high-stress, high-consequence work environment. He needed to do something quickly to save his life. Fortunately, he had been trained in defensive tactics, so he knew what to do. And before the bad guy could even muster reaction time, the officer sweeped his hand out and disarmed the bad guy. Now, what you would think would happen next is the officer would then do a takedown and a handcuff. But what happened was the officer then literally handed the gun back over to the bad guy and put his hands up again. Almost as if to say, you uh, tried to kill me, but you weren't successful. Now I'm going to give you a chance for a do-over. In this scenario, the police officer behaved in a very unexpected way. Some would even say that that behavior was dumb. That was dumb. The police officer didn't perform a takedown and handcuff maneuver, which is what you might expect him to do. That's the rational thing to do. Instead, the officer hands the gun back to the assailant and puts his hands back in the air again. Well, that's not rational. In fact, that might be thought to be dumb. But there's an explanation. The police officer was simply doing what he had been trained to do. Defensive tactics training. During the officer's defensive tactics training, the instructor did not require the student to perform a takedown and handcuff maneuver after disarming their mock suspect. Instead, the instructor verbally told the students to do the takedown and the handcuff maneuver, but the muscles were learning something very different than the cognitive instructions. The muscles were learning to hand the gun back to the assailant for the do-over in the training exercise. Over and over and over again, this was practiced. All the while, creating a habit that if not having this officer's partner intervene might have cost him his life. During the program, I share with the attendees the brain science behind habit formation and the dangerous mistakes that can be made in the training of responders. Mistakes that seem so innocent, yet can have such catastrophic outcomes. You are a slave to your habits under stress. And you can be trained to fail as much as you can be trained to succeed. This one is simple, but perhaps not easy. Practice does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Design and conduct training to ensure the performance of skills mirror the desired performance at an emergency scene. If you take shortcuts in training, those shortcuts become automatic skill performance under stress. Do not think for one moment that you can use logic to talk yourself out of doing something differently when the pressure is on. In other words, don't train one way and then use the logic, well, if this were a real emergency, I would do it differently. That is simply flawed logic. In fact, under stress, your logical brain isn't even functioning as well as it would be if you were not under stress. That's a lesson I've made abundantly clear in the Training for Failure program. Identify and discuss some bad habits that you may have developed as a result of how you were trained. Identify and discuss examples where your training may not mirror the skills you would perform in a real scenario. What are some ways you can develop and maintain good habits of both cognitive skills and muscle memory skills? Discuss an example where someone has done something that appeared to be dumb, 
But in hindsight, it was a reflection of a habit formed over time through training. If you've experienced or witnessed a near miss and would like to have a platform to share your lessons learned with others, please contact me by visiting the SA Matters website and clicking on the Contact Us link on the top of the home page. Think about this for a moment. The lessons learned from your near-miss event could save the life of another first responder. That's powerful. If you want to share your experience, contact me. If you haven't subscribed yet to SA Matters Radio Podcast, please take a moment to do that. Go over to iTunes or Stitcher Radio, and while you're there, consider leaving some feedback on the show. And if you like it, give it a five-star review. This is really important to me because it inspires me to work harder for you. A lot of time and effort goes into producing, recording, and editing the show and lining up guests. Your feedback lets me know that you appreciate the show. Thanks to everyone who took advantage of the huge savings on the books and videos during the holiday sale. I really appreciate your support. In case you haven't heard, I recently released the third book in the Situational Awareness Matters series, The book contains critical lessons on improving your situational awareness and your high-risk decision-making. If you want a copy, just head over to the SA Matters website and click on the store link, or go to Amazon. If you know of a business that might be interested in supporting the Situational Awareness Matters mission with a sponsorship, I'm seeking a few select sponsors to help offset the costs of running the website, social media, podcast, the YouTube channel, the monthly newsletter, and all the other free content. The website has enjoyed over a million visitors, and those visitors have downloaded over 4 million pages of content. We post a new blog article every Friday. Our situational awareness newsletter is distributed to thousands of first responders each month. The podcast that you're listening to has new episodes come out every Tuesday, and it's been downloaded over 80,000 times. So if you know of a business that would like to get their message in front of my visitors, subscribers, and supporters, ask them to contact me through the SA Matters website using the Contact Us link on the homepage. Here's hoping we can pick up an additional sponsor or two, and we can keep this great content coming to you for free. A huge thank you to Midwest Fire for renewing your commitment to our mission by signing on to sponsor this podcast for the second year. I want to take a moment to thank the departments and the organizations that have hosted recent Situational Awareness Matters tour stops. Your efforts to bring this valuable and powerful training on situational awareness and high risk, high consequence decision making to your members and others in your region are greatly appreciated. The Munhall Volunteer Fire Department in Munhall, Pennsylvania, the Peters Township Fire Department in McMurray, Pennsylvania, the Savage Fire Department in Savage, Minnesota, the Utah Winter Fire School in St. George, Utah, and of course where I am now, the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, Fire and Emergency Services Leadership Institute. And by the time this episode airs, I will have completed a program for the Iosco County Firefighters Association in East Tawas, Michigan. If you're interested in joining me for an upcoming Situation Awareness Matters tour stop, on January 24th, I will be at the South Carolina Firefighters Association in Columbia, South Carolina, February 1 and 2, with the Alaska Fire Chiefs Association Conference in Juneau, Alaska, February 6th, Enfield Fire Department in Enfield, Connecticut, February 7th, the Ellesmere Fire Department in Del Mar, New York. February 9th, the Grand Rapids Fire Department in Minnesota. February 10th, the Eveleth Fire Department in Minnesota. February 11th, the Lutzen Fire Department in Minnesota. February 16th, the West Metro Fire Department in Minnesota. February 17th, the Wyndham Fire Department in Minnesota. Kind of doing a Minnesota tour there. Thank you, Minnesota, my home state. February 25th, the Addison Fire Department in Texas. February 26th through 28th, the NSA Winter Conference in Austin, Texas. March 1, the Los Angeles County Fire Department Fire Officers Conference. March 3, the Howard County Fire Department in Maryland. March 4 and 5, the Toms River Fire Department in New Jersey. 
March 8th, the Maryland Fire and Rescue Institute National Fire Service Staff and Command Program. I've presented in the Staff and Command Program for the Maryland Fire Rescue Institute every year since 2001. Thank you for your faith and confidence in my message, Mifri. March 18th, the Center for Public Safety Excellence Conference in Orlando, Florida, where I'll be delivering the closing keynote for that conference. And thank you to the CPSE staff. I have presented at your conference, um, boy, I can't even keep the count, six, seven, maybe eight times. Thank you for the confidence there. March 19th, I'll be at the Minnesota State Fire School in Alexandria, Minnesota, March 21 to 25, the Company Officer Development Institute. This is a leadership program that I'm doing full week, no PowerPoint. (laughs) It's awesome. In Columbus, Indiana. March 22 for the Madison County LEPC in Indiana. March 24, Scott Township Fire Department in Indiana. This is a makeup uh, from program um, where I had to, um, I missed part of the program because I couldn't get there in time because of some fog issues. So we're going to make up a half a day of programming there for Scott Township. And March 26th and 27th, the Company Officer Development Institute in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Again, Uh, leadership development with zero PowerPoint, helping to build tomorrow's leaders today and developing company officers and aspiring company officers for their uh, sojourn into leading at the company level. March 31, I'll be at the Community Fire Department in Houston, Texas. If you're interested in attending an upcoming Situation Awareness Matters tour stop, just head over to the SA Matters website and click on the blue box on the right side of the homepage that says Upcoming Events Schedule. Here's hoping there'll be a tour stop near you and we'll get a chance to meet up. More than 500 agencies on four continents have hosted a Situation Awareness Matters tour stop event. Has your agency? No? What are you waiting for? A near miss? A casualty? Get a hold of me. This is important stuff. If you're interested in hosting a tour stop for 2016, just go to the website and click on the Contact Us link and we'll get something set up for you. Here's a tip on how to host a program at a reduced cost. I schedule many what I call companion programs. These are programs on adjoining days to other programs. So if you see I'm delivering a program within a couple hours of your department and you think you might want to tag along as a companion, contact me. You can save as much as 20% off the program costs by being a companion to an existing program. If you're not a member yet of the SA Matters community of learners, please consider joining. There are more than 5,000 members connected here on SA Matters, sharing ideas on how to improve situational awareness, how to make better decisions under stress, and how to train members to be critical thinkers and resilient problem solvers. Membership is F-R-E-E free. And when you sign up, I'll send you a special report that I've created for the new members called 25 Best Practices for Improving First Responder Safety. If you're not a member yet, head over to the SA Matters website, click on the red box on the right side of the homepage. It says Free Membership. If you want to get connected with me on social media, you can follow me on Twitter at Rich Gassaway or at SA Matters on Twitter. The SA Matters Twitter community is fast approaching 17,000 followers of our mission. Thank you to all of those who follow me on Twitter. You can also get connected on Facebook by joining our private SA Matters Facebook page. It's free too. If you do that, you can just go to uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash SA matters. Here's an enticement for joining the private Facebook group. I have a coupon code in there for 50% off the new book. That'll save you 20 bucks. On LinkedIn, you can also find me by searching Rich Gassaway. So thanks to everybody that's connected with me on social media. I really, really appreciate it. Well, that's it. Episode 91 is complete. Thank you to our podcast sponsor, Midwest Fire. Thank you to all of our live event hosts. And thank you, our listeners, for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I really, really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there. And may the peace of the Lord 
and strong situational awareness. Be with you always. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. If you are interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgassaway.com.